Hey guys, so today we're going to go ahead and talk about um, representative particles um, going from particles to moles on our mole map. Okay, so a representative particle is the smallest unit of a substance. Okay, so smallest unit of a substance. Okay, so the types of particles we have, we have a monatomic element. Okay, so that means a one. Remember, mono means one. So monatomic elements are called atoms. Okay, diatomic elements. Okay, remember that di means two. Okay, if it decides to focus. Okay, so diatomic elements are molecules. Okay, because there's more than one. And ionic compounds are called formula units. Okay, molecular or covalent compounds, they're going to be called molecules as well. Okay, if it decides to clear up, let me zoom out some. Maybe I'm too close. Okay, there you go. Okay, and then ions. Ions, remember what ions are. They're atoms with a charge, so they are still called atoms. And then acids are actually molecules. Okay, we haven't learned about acids yet, but that's okay. Just know that they are also called molecules. Okay, so remember what Avogadro's number means. Avogadro's number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which represents the number of chemical units in one mole of any substance. So for a monatomic element, the chemical unit is an atom. Okay, so one mole of any chemical okay, is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Okay, so we have to identify whether or not the following examples are atoms, molecules, or formula units. Okay, so we have we have one mole of calcium chloride, so this is going to be 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd formula units. Okay, the reason being is because it's an ionic compound. We have calcium, which is a metal, and chlorine, which is a nonmetal. So remember, if we have an ionic compound, it's going to be a formula unit. Okay, one mole of calcium, we have an ion, so that's going to be an atom. So we have 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Okay, the next one, we have one mole of HCl, and HCl is actually an acid, so that's going to be a molecule, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, so the next one, we have one mole of P2O5. Well, both of these are nonmetals, so we have a covalent compound, so that's going to be a molecule as well. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules. Okay, the next one, we have one mole of calcium. Well, we only have one atom, so what is that? A monatomic element, which is again an atom. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. And then the last one, we have Cl2, which is a diatomic. So since it's a diatomic, 
it's going to be considered a molecule. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd um, molecules. Okay? All right. So let's go ahead and take a look at some... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Let's go ahead and take a look at some practice problems. So... Um, we are going to solve these the same way that we solved our problems from yesterday. Okay, so from um, moles to mass or mass to moles. Okay, so the same thing except now we're doing particles to moles or moles to particles. So our first problem is how many moles are in 4.50 times 10 to the 25th atoms of manganese? Okay, so our given is going to be 4.50 times 10 to the 25th atoms of manganese. So what's manganese? That's Mn. Okay, then we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor. So our conversion factor, remember for um, representative particles. So our representative particles for every one mole that we have, it's going to represent 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms. Because in this case, we're not using the word particle, we're using the word atom. Okay, so going back to our problem, if this is atoms, then this, um, the bottom of our conversion factor must also be atoms. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms of manganese. And then what's on top? Well, what are we looking for? We're looking for moles. So one mole of manganese. Okay, and then we can go ahead and solve. So on your calculator, Okay, I have, okay, your calculator is going to be different from mine, okay, which is probably the tricky part because we're going to have to work with um, scientific notation, okay, so in parentheses I have my first number, 4.50 times 10 to the 25th power close parentheses, that's my first number, okay, and then remember if this is a 1, that means I'm going to skip that multiplication part and go straight to division. So I'm dividing by parentheses my new number, which is 6.02 times 10 raised to the 23rd power, okay, and the answer that I get is 40, oops, sorry, 74.751. Okay, I'll just stop right there. <clears throat> There's no sense in writing all those numbers, right? So, what's the unit that I'm going to use? Remember that atoms of manganese are going to cancel out with atoms of manganese, so that leaves me with moles of manganese. So, moles of manganese. Now, Remember how many significant figures does my problem have? Remember when we're looking at scientific notation, you can completely ignore the times 10 to the 25th and just look at this number right here. So 4.50 is how many significant figures? If you said three, then you are correct. So I have, or my final answer rather, should be 74.5. 8 moles of manganese. Okay, and then always box your answer so that we can see that that's your final answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to the next problem. So how many atoms are found in 3.27 moles of magnesium? Okay, so this time we asked to look for atoms and we've been given moles of magnesium. So I have 3.27 moles of magnesium, which is Mg, and we're going to multiply that by our conversion factor. 
So remember, we're asked to look for atoms, so that means my 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd atoms are going to go on top because that's what I'm looking for. Okay, and then what goes on bottom? It should be the same unit as what I've been given. So that's my one mole of magnesium. Okay, so now I can go ahead and solve. So that's going to be, I'm going to input my first number, which is just 3.27. Okay, close parentheses. Do I really need parentheses? No, but because I'm using it for my scientific notation, I'm just putting my parentheses in to be safe. Okay, so I'm multiplying that by my scientific notation, or Avogadro's number, 6.02 times... 10 raised to the 23rd power and enter. Now my answer is going to be, don't forget how many significant figures do I need in my answer? I have three. So if you want to go ahead and do that now, well, your final answer would be 1.9. Well, 1, 2, 3. This is going to get rounded up to... 197 times 10 to the 24th power. Okay, so what's my formula, or sorry, what's my units going to be? Moles of magnesium cancels out with moles of magnesium, and I'm left with atoms of magnesium. So atoms of magnesium. Okay. All right, and now for our last problem. Okay, so number three. Chalk is composed primarily of calcium carbonate. How many particles are in 3.4 moles of calcium carbonate? So your first step is, what's your formula for calcium carbonate? So calcium is Ca, and it is a or it has, rather, a positive 2 charge. And then carbonate, let me go ahead and just look that up for you. Carbonate is CO3. So CO3 with a charge of negative 2. So do we have any subscripts? No, because they're going to cancel each other out. Okay, so I have 3.4 moles of calcium carbonate and I'm going to multiply that with my conversion factor. Now I'm looking for particles. So if I'm looking for particle, Avogadro's number is going to be on top. Particles of CaCO3 and then what goes on bottom? Moles because that's what I was given. So moles is going to go on the bottom so they can cancel each other out. Okay, so again, now I can go ahead and calculate. So what's 3.4? Okay, so 3.4 times, parentheses, 6.02 times 10 raised to the negative, or sorry, raised to the 23rd power, and I get... 2.0468 times 10 to the 24th power. Okay, so remember we have to round this to significant figures. Our final answer should also have this many significant figures. So I have two significant figures in my problem. So this is my first significant figure, second significant figure. So my final answer is 2.0 times 10 to the 24th power. Okay, and then what units are we left with? Well, moles of calcium carbonate are going to cancel out with moles of car um, calcium carbonate. So I'm left with particles of calcium carbonate. Okay, so that concludes our notes for today. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask. 
Um, and you guys do also have homework um, on page 10 of your packet. Okay, so page 10 of your packet, you have a whole page to do. Do not do page 9. Just skip page 9 for me and do not do this, okay? Um, we haven't really decided if we're going to do this for a different day or if we're just not going to do it at all, okay? So again, just skip page 9 for now and you guys have homework tonight on page 10, okay? If you have any questions, feel free to um, text me through Remind or contact me through Canvas, okay? And if you need any help for tutorials, just let us know.